All right, we're getting into the trig functions on the coordinate plane. Yes, I love this stuff. Okay, I'm gonna give you some background info. Just hold on tight. It'll make more sense when we, once we get into some examples. So I want you to think of your x as your x value, your y as your y value, and your r as distance. Down here, you'll notice we've got all our six trig functions, but instead of opposite adjacent hypotenuse, we've got letters, variables, x, y, and r. Now these are exactly the same thing as thinking of it like opposite adjacent hypotenuse, but it's just thinking about it in a little bit different of a way, and it'll make sense uh, once we move forward. So let's go ahead and just dive right into an example. Let's say we had a point here, a point four comma three. So I'm gonna move from my origin here to the right four spaces, one, two, three, four. That gives me four spaces this way. Then I'm gonna move up to my y-axis, one, two, three. Give me a point right here, that gives me three. And from here, check this out. What I can do is, I can draw a line from my origin to my point because I wanna find the distance. Now, notice, what we've got here is a right triangle, so we can use Pythagorean theorem, and we'll get a distance of five. From there, let's go ahead and label our x, y, and r values. Looking at my x value, I see I have an x value of four. That's just four across here. I've got a y value of three. That's three on the y in the y direction. And my distance, my r, is going to be five. Looking at our triangle that we've drawn up here, let's put theta. Theta, we always want our angle to be on the inside of the triangle. Let's go ahead and find cosine. Cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. That would be four over five. Now look at our new trig functions down here. This cosine theta equals x over r. That would also be four over five. So you can see how all these x, y, and r values just correspond with the opposite adjacent in the hypotenuse that you've seen before. If we wanted to find sine theta, that would be opposite 3 over 5 or y over r, 3 over 5, same thing. Let's go ahead and do another example. Here we've got the point negative 1, negative 2, so we're going to start by going negative 1 on the x-axis, that's negative 1 right here, so I'm going to have x equals negative 1. My y value is going to be down negative 2, 1, 2. That's going to be negative 2 right here, so y equals negative 2. And then to find my distance, I go ahead and draw my right triangle here. Remember, theta is always going to go on the inside right there, and I'm going to get an r equals, and if I do my Pythagorean theorem, I'm going to get the square root of 5 square root of 5. Okay, let's go ahead and evaluate a couple trig functions. Let's start with secant theta. I remember secant is the reciprocal of cosine. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so that means secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. That's going to give us negative square root of 5, and that would be square root of 5 divided by negative 1. If I come up here and check secant theta, that would be r over x. That would be r square root of 5 over x, negative 1. Same thing. Next, let's try tangent theta. Tangent, we remember, is opposite over adjacent. That would be negative 2 divided by negative 1, which would be positive 2, because we've got the negative divided by negative is positive now. And if we looked up here, tangent theta would be y over x. That would be Again, negative 2 over negative 1, which would be a positive 2. So once you've got your triangle drawn, you can use your x, r, y system if you'd like, or you can even go back to using your sides that you know, opposite adjacent hypotenuse. Okay, let's do an interesting case. Here we've got negative 5, 0. So if I go over to my negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that's going to give me a side length here of negative 5. Now I've got a y of 0, so I'm not going up or down at all. I'm just going to stay right here on the x-axis. So I've got an x value of negative 5. I've got my y value of 0. What's my r going to be here? 
Well, we could do Pythagorean theorem. That would be square root of 5 squared plus 0 squared. Or we can look at this and say, well, I can just count it over. It's just going to be 5. My distance here is also going to be 5, but positive, not negative, because it's distance. So you might be asking, how do I draw a triangle if I've just got a straight line? Well, you can't because a triangle needs at least three points and we've only got two here. So this is where the XYR system kind of helps out a little bit. Let's say we wanted to find these trig functions. Cosine theta, cosine theta, that's our adjacent over hypotenuse or our X over R, our adjacent, our, our X value over our distance. So that's negative five over five. That's gonna give us a value of negative one. Looking at sine theta, sine theta normally would be opposite over hypotenuse. In this case, let's go ahead and use our y value, y over r. That would be zero divided by five, which would be zero. Okay, looking at our tangent theta here, tangent theta is opposite over hypotenuse or y over x. Let's look here, we've got y over x, zero over negative five that's going to be zero as well. Let's do one more here, cotangent theta. Cotangent would normally be the reciprocal of tangent, so adjacent over opposite. Here, our cotangent is going to be x over y. That's going to give us negative five over zero. Now, keep in mind, we can never divide by zero, and here we've got a zero in the denominator. So, what we say here is cotangent at this point is un defined. Undefined. So make sure you can recognize whenever you end up dividing by zero that you're going to end up with an undefined function.